Hey traders, we thought we'd do something a little bit different and interview Nick with some of the questions you guys had in the VIP community and also as our Instagram followers. What is the best market for beginner traders to trade in? So we um, typically, when you're talking about markets to trade, from a big picture standpoint, one market is, is no better or worse than another market. It's more about what strategies are you uh, trying to attempt to, to trade that market on, right? Because if you're trying to trade a trend following strategy, there's going to be certain markets that trend more often. If you're trading back and forth strategies, uh, you might those will probably do better on markets that tend to just go back and forth and don't trend aggressively. I'll give you one quick example that a lot of people will probably recognize. Uh, if you were trying to, to set Tesla and trying to trade back and forth on Tesla in the last year or so it would be a really really painful experience because that market has just been trending up and trending and trending and trending and it doesn't seem to want to stop so you have to keep that in mind when we are looking at different markets uh, what markets fit the strategies for our trading now on top of that when it comes to the easiest markets to trade again there's no such thing as easy money in in trading uh, but uh, typically I like the lower volatility markets because they're a little bit more forgiving for the beginner mistakes that people are going to make right using the wrong position sizes using um, you know just making simple mistakes that new traders inevitably make I made them everybody who gets into this stuff they make those simple mistakes putting their stop loss in the wrong place or forgetting to put a stop loss or uh, putting their target at the wrong place, whatever it is that you make a mistake, putting on too much size on a position. There are some markets that are a bit more forgiving, uh, for example, things like Euro USD, uh, Australian dollar. Uh, if you're looking at stocks, you might trade something uh, like the S&P uh, or trade individual stocks, you know, maybe things like Disney or Walmart, these little slower stocks that don't, you know, rip one way and can destroy you if you make a beginner mistake, right? So, for me, the lower volatility markets are going to be a little bit better for new traders to start. So for me, currencies, like I said, Aussie dollar and uh, Euro dollar are some markets to consider trying out and looking at for beginners, just because again, that volatility, the average daily move of those markets is less than something like pound yen or uh, you know euro Australian dollar, right? Those markets move aggressively and if they move against you and you made a beginner mistake, it's going to be a, a disaster. So again, uh, very, very important to pick markets that are forgiving when trying things out. And of course, before you do anything, you should make sure you demo test, you should make sure that you've back tested concepts that you're doing and that you're not just trying to call shots and, and you know go by your gut because that is not a good strategy when trying to trade markets. We want to have a strategy that we've tested, that we feel confident in, and we start very, very small, risking small amounts of money so that we don't put ourselves in big danger, especially when we make those very expected beginner mistakes. What risk to reward is the best in Forex? So this question is uh, definitely going to be dependent on the strategy you are using. So when we're talking about reward to risk for our newer traders out there, or risk to reward, we're talking about for every one dollar or pound or euro or yen that you are trading with or risking, right? How much reward can we potentially get from that trade? And if you think about this, let's say that you entered here, right? This is your buy trade and you put a stop here. If we're going for a two to one reward to risk, we're talking about we're risking one in this distance and we're making two if price goes in our favor. So it's, it's going for a bigger target relative to a smaller uh, risk. Now, generally speaking, uh, if you're looking for the answer of uh, is a two to one the best or a three to one, right, meaning that you risk one dollar to make three dollars or you risk one dollar to make two dollars, the best, the best is definitely going to be, uh, you know, circumstance dependent because you might have a certain market that, that typically trends for a lot longer and maybe in that case you want to go for a bigger reward to risk, maybe you don't, right? So it definitely does depend on the market and the strategy that you are trading. However, for me, generally speaking, the biggest uh, proponent is going for something that is a positive reward to risk, which basically means um, for every one that you're trading, one risk or uh, one dollar risk, you don't want to be taking like 0.5 percent or 0.5 uh, dollars gain, right? We don't want to risk one dollar to make 50 cents. We want to risk something that is risking one to make at least, in my opinion, something like a two to one. 
So if I risk $1, I'm going to be trying to make at least $2 from that trade, if at all possible. Now, sometimes you're just going to have trades where you move the stop to break even and you take $0 of profit. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm looking to, to put my reward as far away that makes sense because I want to risk as small as I can to make as big as I can in the markets. Um, we talked about Tesla just a minute ago. If we think about Tesla, for example, if you bought Tesla at uh, $100 a share and you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to invest in this company, meaning I'm either with this company until it goes to zero or until it goes to way more, right? In that case, let's say that we had a target at $300 per share. If we bought that stock at $100 and we risked 100, meaning we're risking the full amount that we invested, if we go to $300, We've made $3 on every $1 that we put as a risk initially. That to me is, is just generally good practice in markets because what it does is it favors those explosions in our favor and lets those winners really work for us and stops out the losers as soon as possible. If you've ever heard the old mantra in trading, uh, you know, let your winners run and cut your losers short, that is really what we were trying to do with a positive reward to risk. Now, one last point on this, I like to use trailing stops in a lot of the trading that I do, which means I take that initial risk. Let's say I risk $1 and price starts moving, walking in my favor. If, if we bought the stock at 100 and then suddenly it's at 150 and then it's at 175 and at 200, what I will typically do is I took that trade here, I'm gonna start moving that stop, meaning I'm moving my risk into profit, meaning I will no longer be able to lose money on this position. So if I, if I took the trade here, price starts moving in my favor, I start walking that, stock, uh, that stop up as the stock or currency price moves up in my favor. So it's following the price and locking in as much as possible because in that case, sometimes you'll get some crazy reward to risks when you really catch a winner. For example, if you bought that stock at 100 and then it gets up to 600, which is near where it's trading right now, um, now you're at a six to one, your initial risk. So that's how I like to, to gauge reward to risk ratios. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe down below and follow us on Instagram at A1 Trading Team to send in any questions you may have for a future video like this and see more behind the scenes content of what goes on at A1 Trading Team.